Welcome to this webinar, everybody, on how Metro Cash and Carry delivers great personalized customer experiences through omnichannel consistency. The webinar is part of the Site Coach Summer School, including more than 80 sessions available live and on demand during both July and August. Um, purpose of all sessions. is to inspire IT and marketing professionals on how to best work with customer experience management and digital strategy, taking into account the technology, process, and competences needed to succeed. You all know about all the challenges around this. Uh, digital marketing leaders like Forrester Research, Vance and Born, and our competent site core solution partners are the ones who will provide valuable insights and learnings on digital strategies and transformation. Now, a little bit of the housekeeping. So first of all, my name is Marie-Louise Boucher. I'm Partner Manager in Sitecore International, and I will be your moderator of today's webinar. Um, today's webinar is being recorded and will be available on sitecoresummerschool.com within the next um, 24 hours, approximately. Um, we will be taking questions for about five to 10 minutes at the end of this presentation, so please feel free to post any questions you may have in the chat box on the left side of your screen throughout the whole presentation whenever a uh, question comes to your mind. Uh, and now, of course, uh, most importantly, I would like to introduce today's speakers. Uh, so today we're joined live by Marina Sverdl, Global Head of Multi-Channel Marketing at Metro, and Mikhail Popelar, Managing Director at Actum Plus. Now, over to you. So, hello. Um, I'm Michael Popelar, and I will introduce Marina Sverdl. She's a global head of multi-channel marketing at Metro, uh, and she is responsible for digital strategies, uh, its adoption in 25 countries, and all digital touch points within Metro Cash and Carry. Good morning, uh, Marina speaking here. It's my pleasure to introduce Mihal Popolaj, who is Managing Director of Actum Plus, a company that helps us to, to bridge technology and business. Um, Iha is the only Sitecore MVP digital strategist in, in German and Czech market, and we, uh, we were working together really hard in the past couple of year, years, not only to deploy Sitecore technology in all 25 countries, but also to make sure that it's being adopted and being taken care of by the countries, being properly used and utilized. Before I get there to what we have done and how we have been um, working together on that road, let me introduce a couple of facts of Metro um, so that you know what exactly sales line I'm talking here about. So we are working together on um, for the brand Metro and Macro that is present in 25 countries, um, and there is uh, a professional wholesale company, the core brand of the Metro Group. We are a leading international player in wholesale with more than 750 stores um, and 112,000 employees. So quite quite a big player in the market, uh, quite heterogeneous and also trying to reflect um, different uh, local strategies that we have in the market, still sharing one and the same technology that is Sitecore and how challenging it is and how we were trying to address this challenge in, in a flexible, modular way this is something that uh, we together would be presenting you in the course of this webinar. Um, if you look beyond the figures, what we are, what, what Metro Cash and Carry stands for, we are operating in 25 countries, but we are not just uh, a cold machine with some business behind. We are serving 21 million entrepreneurs. So we have, we have. Uh, our customers in mind, whatever we try to develop, to deploy, to drive forward, or whatever communication we are um, driving to them to make it relevant and meaningful for them. Um, and beyond the figures of, uh, of sales and beyond the figures of, of uh, profit and results, there is uh, a very strong uh, brand positioning behind that is um, to be the champion for independent business. And the four is extremely important for us because uh, it's not that we want to be the champion, not the chess beating. We want to champion independent businesses because if we make them successful, this is what will make us succeed. So if by helping our customers make their business a success, that we can start to fulfill our own ambition to be the champion for independent business. Um, and this is and this is a 
exactly what is driving us. This is exactly that we are trying to fulfill in whatever communication we address. So we want to help our customers being competitive by granting them access to individually relevant content in the moment of need. Real time, any touch point, any device, anywhere, anytime. And this is extremely important for us that it is the driver for any kind of communication, for any kind of a utilization of technology we are introducing to the countries, where, of course, the global, the web that Metro is, is having is the key digital communication touch point. Whatever communication we produce will automatically will drive the digital footprint of it that will land in our key touch point that is, that is the web that is global in terms of technology with, within 25 countries, but is enriched by local ingredients um, that we have to leverage the power of the brand. So we have a global user experience framework that we have developed within the launch of Sitecore. It um, took us um, two years to get it to all the countries. But what is important here to say is, why do we go for a consistent framework that is that is the same across every country, but has enough of flexibility and modularity to attend uh, relevant local country needs and to reflect the local country strategy. First of all, it helps us to be more impactful and consistent in our customer communication. But also, what is extremely important if you look at the way how we technically deploy to the countries is that we test learn, and we make it easier, faster, and cheaper for the countries to adopt locally. If they were to develop this technology themselves locally, they would never gain the speed and they would never gain the adoption that we're able to offer. And there are certain things that you need to consider when doing that, and also a lot of learnings that we will be sharing today with Mihai over the course of this presentation. And if you look at how the Metro was progressing from a non-purely digital brand, over the course of time, and, you, and if you look at, at the traffic that we were able to gain uh, in the past five years since we started the first activities, and the impact that Cycle Launch was bringing, was bringing to us is, is really in, incredible. So growing this, growing digital footprint by five times is, is, extremely, is extremely relevant and also is extremely rewarding. You could also see that we were gaining a lot of, a lot of visibility with the launch of Sitecore where Technology was helping us a lot to, to drive this forward, and, uh, but it was not just that. Um, and this is, um, this is the key message that we would like to bring across today, that uh, going together with the right technology that can deliver relevant experience with the right content that is driven by, uh, by the right solution um, is, is helping a lot to achieve results. And these are the figures that are showing to you. This is our, uh, one of the examples from, uh, from Macro in Poland, that together with the launch of Sitecore and optimizing and uh, reinventing uh, content messaging and different areas of the website, together with the right technology in place, we were able to drive uh, increasingly strong visibility for the content that we have. So you can see here that in Poland specifically, we achieved 42% increment in non-paid traffic for MCC Web within the three months of deployment. We have all, also other countries that are pursuing this, um, this way of, of doing things, for example, with Germany, um, clearly gaining a lot of visibility, increasing visibility in, in their dedicated assortment area of fish by nine times. First of all, of course, we had a zero measurement starting from zero. It helps a lot to, to increase massively. But this is exactly the role of Actum Plus that it comes into play when it's about applying the right technology uh, with the right content delivered. And if you look at the areas that we were considering or we were going through to see what have we done on the way to make it happen, we learned that uh, we need to drive the development and the adoption of the customer web going together. Because if you look at, look at the content that we were developing in the course of time of the past two years in all 25 countries, um, it was not one global repository that just got translated. The articulation of the business strategy in the countries is, is very much different with Metro, where we have 
uh, strong um, countries that are focusing only on professional business with hotels and restaurants, that is in France, Spain, and Italy. You have countries that are rather multi-specialist, and this is all to be to be articulated or to be reflected in the user experience and information architecture makes the whole story um, extremely, extremely um, challenging. So if you look at all the steps that we had to take, solution development, documentation, country rollout, content migration, adoption, personalizing experience, and last but not least, training and people, people skills. These were all the steps that we were looking through what we did on our way and how Acton Plus was supporting us to drive this forward um, and to help countries grow their digital footprint and adopt um, the great technology that we have put in place. Thank you, Marina. Uh, I will continue on the next slide. So, uh, as Marina said, we helped not with the solution development or implementation. We helped basically with adoption and migration and helping country uh, countries really to leverage the sidecore technology fully because it's not just about the technical deployment but it's also about being it used for the business and for marketing. So we help uh, afterwards when the, when the solution was developed with four main uh, parts which was content migration, uh, adoption of the solution, personalization and training and people skills. Just to give you a brief example, what does it mean to uh, migrate 25 countries to Sitecore? Uh, it does mean that there were more than 200 people involved. Uh, in our offices, we had uh, 12 native speakers to help countries to migrate from Prague, their uh, website from the old solution to Sitecore. We have been able to migrate uh, 18 pages daily. Uh, we have, if you count the mandates, it was more than 440 full days, and we spent like 15,000 hours plus on, on the project. And basically, it's important to understand that, uh, that the Metro website is not just the language version, as Marina said. So it's not just one master site, which is then translated and, uh, and the same all over the world. It's, it's rather the framework where countries can use the common features, common elements, uh, and components, but uh, they uh, can do their own website within the environment. So uh, it's, at the end, it's 25 independent uh, sites which are managed by countries locally and they should be empowered to, to, to use Sitecore fully. So to be successful with the migration, uh, just give you the rough example how the process went. Uh, um, so to, suc to succeed means to scale the content execution and migration. So what we saw on the market typically is that there is, as I said, the master site which is then translated, but it was not our case. So we need to develop um, a solution or the process which was about helping countries to migrate all the current content they have to the new website, but it was not, also, it was not just this. It was also to create new pages, we have been creating new images, we have applied the UX improvements of the new design, and we help with the configurations. And important, uh, this project was, or the process was important because it was part of the adoption. So how we designed the process of adoption uh, to be really sure that all those 200 plus content editors across the world will be really happy with using Sitecore and will be really willing to work with the system and, and create the new uh, content and use it for their businesses, we, have, uh, we had three stages of adoption. So first, there were some objectives in the beginning, what Metro Cash and Carry wants to uh, achieve on the website and they, uh, wants, to, wants to fulfill the needs of the customer on the web. So from those objectives, the UX concept, uh, personal journeys uh, was created and we started the adoption of the new UX design and the concept within the, with the countries on the kickoff. So every country had the kickoff meeting which was in personal uh, with the representatives of Metro Cash and Carry where we were helping to uh, describe why the new website is, uh, is there, what is the reason behind, what are the goals and values and how it's redesigned. So this is quite 
uh, different what's uh, happening uh, normally in large organization because normally the headquarters prepare something and then distribute it to countries and say, okay, here it is and, and use it. So we rather started with the approach which was really individual for every country. So for China and Japan, it was totally different, for example, than for Germany or France. So uh, the adoption started already before the migration and it was the UX concept adoption. Then was the second stage, which was the migration. So taking the old content from the current site, restructuring it, putting it on the new website, adding uh, the new content which was designed. And during this process, countries really adopted how to work with the basic features and how to work with the basic functionalities of Sitecore. So we wanted to really, at the end of the migration, be sure that the local content editorial teams can manage the site and can improve it and maintain it and really do the, the content order on their own and really use it for the business. Because I'm repeating it again, it's not common. So typically you get the website, which is from the master, and then you just translate it. So at the end of the migration process, local teams were ready to work with the site core and to manage that uh, on their own. Uh, but what was also crucial and what is typically not happening uh, is that we also wanted the local teams to, to work with the personalization, testing, and utilizing all these uh, clever marketing features which are within the site core and uh, which makes the site core really powerful if you're using it. So uh, after, site was, after, the, after the sites uh, were live, we were helping uh, with the support process to uh, teach the local teams to uh, use personalization, to work with the personalization, to analyze it, and then optimize the, uh, the full cycle. So these three stages were very important for us, and we did this because we wanted to be sure, really sure that the investment into the technology will, uh, at, the end, uh, at the end, pay off and the countries will use it. What we found during the process that it's important, and Marina briefly touched that, uh, that personalization is not the thing to start with when the website is live. It should go uh, hand by hand with the development and already in the preparation phase when you are preparing a new solution, so we are talking about the technicals and about the architecture and about uh, uh, how things will be developed. It's a time to think about personalization and digital strategies and how they will be executed at the end on the site. So our learning is to start preparing execution roadmap, which features, what techniques will be applied for achieve uh, business goals and how this business digital strategy will be then applied on the site. Because typically what we see on the market again is that companies are developing, are implementing Sitecore, at the end they have the site which is live and then realize, well, we don't have any plan how to use personalization. So, so this was important for us. So it means being prepared that uh, when the site is getting live, you can set it up, all the important things like taxonomies, like goals, like predictive profiling, uh, understand which external data should be connected, and uh, the, the site on Sitecore is then ready to help companies to max out the business potential of the communication. So uh, the third part after, after going live is to test and roll out successful use cases. So case by case, small steps, uh, uh, step by step, uh, applying it. And what we are doing uh, and what we were doing and currently Metro is doing on their own is um, in some countries test use cases for personalization and testing and then applying it for the other countries and building really the knowledge base, what is working, what is not working, and this can be leveraged uh, within the local teams. So even in Japan, China, uh, or Germany, France, Spain, Czech Republic, all, uh, all across the Europe. So uh, that's important, and this is our approach. And uh, again, to, to stress that really start with personalization is too late when the website is live because it's not ready for that and you need really the new iteration to get to that. So example of a use case uh, we are using. Um, so 
what is really easy to do is, for example, to personalize the banners on the home page, really to target the right audiences and lead them to the goals which are designed uh, within, the, within the site. So what we are doing are the three steps. We are segmenting the audience from external systems to select the right customer journey for them. Uh, Metro uh, is a company which has all the data from their customers, so they have 100% customers identified, so they, they have easier situation. But uh, yeah, at the end, they can use it uh, for segmenting the audience. So that's the first step, understand who are the customers. Then we are using predictive profiling inside code to understand when the customer is on the journey. So exa for example, we know that already registered customers are looking to some other content sections that the customers who are thinking about being registered and, and being able to, to purchase in Metro or Macro. So, so second uh, tactic we are using is really using the predictive profiling to understand where the customer is and what is the next goal to present. And the third one was just easily present the uh, banner on the home page to lead the customer to the next goal. So it might be card registration for the customers who are not registered yet. Then might be the product catalog just to understand what are the products uh, Metro, is, uh, Metro is selling. Uh, also uh, guide the customers through the inspirational content, etc. And uh, to have in mind that this is just an easy case for one country, but every country in Metro is different. So this should be applied differently and it's just the mechanism how, how to use. So this is an uh, example. We are also having some other use cases, which uh, unfortunately I can't show, but, but basically it's about, for example, shortening the customer journey. So if we have the customer registration on the site, which is the set of forms and steps to register, we are, uh, for example, leading customer, customers that didn't finish the registration to the step they end up on. So for example, if you fill just two steps of free uh, and you didn't finish, we are trying to get customers to the third step to finish the registration and we are using the call to action uh, placeholders for that on the homepage or across the site to, uh, to do that. So easy, documented use cases and case by case, this is applied and, and rolled out within the, within the countries. Uh, important thing what we did and what is uh, also very powerful within the organization was that we developed our own training system and our own knowledge sharing uh, processes. So we are not training and Metro is not training countries on, a, I would say, template implementation or out-of-the-box sidecore uh, instance, we are uh, doing trainings on the implementation of sidecore in Metro, focusing on the features which are important for Metro and focusing on the content and business strategies that are applied on the website. So we prepared, for example, tutorial videos for content editors which are with the content which is related to Metro and relevant to Metro, so they will easily understand how to uh, use the, the personalization so it's quite close to their daily work and daily business. We have also established a dedicated support for marketeers in countries. So if they want to ask, they have a line to ask and we are ready to answer. So it's not that end. If you, if you are willing to understand something, there is uh, all the time any uh, all the time person who can help you with, either in Acton Plus or Metro. Uh, for the big countries which are important, we uh, prepared a coaching uh, sessions, so a uh, series of workshop web webinars, trainings, or know-how sharing. We were uh, visiting countries, showing them how to work with Sitecore, uh, presenting them the real examples, and working them uh, with them on the business as aspects of using Sitecore, not on the technical ones. Uh, and also, there is an executional support for the content editors in the country, so if they want to have someone who will help them with the execution of their strategies or their content or their personalization, we are, we are ready for that. So it was important because it's not just saying, okay, here you have the sidecore and leverage it in the country. It was about guiding them how to use all the functionalities and how to be able locally to leverage the power of 
such a technology. And I'm coming to uh, the very last slide, and then uh, I think there will be space for questions uh, if you want to ask anything. So there are uh, five key takeaways from starting personalization in Metro and what we have learned during the process. So, so important thing, development and execution roadmaps are crucial. What we see uh, within other big customers, in, in, uh, for example, in Europe, and Metro Cash and Carry is one of the uh, largest implementations of Sitecore in Germany, is that typically the development is happening, the IT part is happening, but business is not aware of what they can use the Sitecore for and how to apply the business strategies at the end uh, when the site is live. So this is really needed to think about it hand in hand and, and to build both roadmaps together. Uh, on the other hand, when the site is live and when you want to leverage it, uh, apply the keep it simple and stupid methodology. So apply small use cases and build the complexity step by step. If you want to achieve big things and if you start from nothing uh, uh, with uh, artificial intelligence, for example, you will not be successful because you will not know what to do. And we are using for that, for example, maturity models uh, which are derived from the Sitecore customer experience maturity model really to help customers to grow their uh, understanding of what to do and their internal knowledge. So coming to uh, the point number three, maturity of the organization is important. As I said, if you are telling to the organization to do some uh, things which are more mature and they are not prepared for that, they will not understand and they cannot leverage the technology then. So, and on the other hand, if the company is prepared and it's really experienced, you cannot talk with the basics. So it's really to apply the right things uh, according to the maturity of the organization. Uh, fourth, uh, key takeaway is that big organization like Metro needs to see measurable results and you need to engage your organization with the measurable results which are easy to understand. So it's not just about showing that the functions are working, it's also showing that there are some, there is some value delivered by um, using those features and we are trying to present every case and focus on the value delivered. So they, on, the, on one side we can learn what to do better, uh, but also we can present what we did and how the investment is, is uh, leveraged uh, within the company. And fifth one, I would say the most important one, that the technology will not drive the execution. If you just uh, think that implementing technology will help you to uh, achieve the business results, there is something missing. Technology needs to be applied and needs to be applied correctly according to the business strategies and uh, uh, business goals and objectives you, you have and uh, which are on your site applied as a customer journeys or uh, how, the, how the site is uh, created. So uh, that's all from me for now and Maria, I'm ready for questions. Thank you so much. Can you hear me, Michal? Yes, I hear you. Perfect. Thank you so much both to you. It's really uh, great to see these uh, strong, concrete results and, and, and receive these good advice uh, also on both how it's important to keep the uh, experience marketing strategy as part of the project from the very beginning to the and throughout the process and, and throughout the, the whole journey. <laughs> That's also uh, the point about... Um, small use cases, failing faster to learn faster and gain bigger, as we also say. Um, also, measuring value is, is very important. So, But it's nice to see all these, uh, these important uh, statements uh, being put into play and, and how it is important and has been throughout the, this project and, and, and journey that you've been through. Um, let's see if we have some, some questions uh, coming in. I think we have a few here. Uh, so the first one would be, what was the biggest challenge? Yeah, the biggest challenge was organize everything to go smoothly and, and uh, because, as I said, there were more than 200 people involved and many parties within Metro on the agency side. So, so the biggest challenge was to really establish uh, the migration process as a process and all the 
adoption phases as a process that can be repeated. So this was the most challenging thing. And also, we were facing challenges in applying the strategies and really fine-tuning the technology to be uh, ready for um, the strategies we had and, and, and doing the personalization. And also, it's, the, the scale is quite big. So monthly, there are millions of visits on the site. And uh, to manage such a scale was, was challenging. Definitely. Can imagine that. <laughs> the second question here, how did you migrate content into 25 countries? Sorry, I didn't get that. Can you repeat it, please? Yeah, you, you were mentioning also the challenge working with the content in, in 25 countries and, and deployment and so on. So there's a question here. How did you ma migrate, sorry, how did you migrate content to 25 countries? Okay, so we had a, we had a process which was uh, helping countries to understand what to prepare for the migration. So we have several documents like uh, content matrices and, uh, and uh, understanding the structure of the current website, understanding the goals, uh, understanding the, uh, what, what they did previously. We were also able to understand the content from the language perspective. So for example, for China, we had a native speaker here in Prague who helped the content editorial team to understand what to move where, basically. And uh, we were talking with the countries. This was also important. So we, it was not just one-way communication, hey, you have something prepared here and do it on your own. But we have been uh, actively asking them to help uh, to migrate it and, and to uh, inform us or uh, show us what they what they did in the past and, and not to forget anything. And also, um, we help them with the technicals because for example, to migrate all the URLs, redirect them, and, and all, do the, all the stuff for SEO and, and things like that, it was also important not to forget about it. So, yeah, it was about the process and about the communication with the countries uh, in person or via um, telcos and, and uh, video conferences. Mm. Thank you. And this is actually related, but maybe you still want to, to share a few words on it. There's a third question here. Do you manage personalization in all countries, or do you have delegates working for local offices? Well, typically we want the uh, local offices to manage personalization by themselves, because we cannot know 100% their business and their goals. Every country is different, so we are rather helping them to gain knowledge and understand it and then manage it on their own than doing it from the center or from one execution or content editing team. But uh, in some countries, we are acting as a local agency. Some countries have their own agencies which are able to manage personalization. Some of the countries are managing it locally. And it's really just about understanding the small steps they can apply and understanding how they will help with the business. Important is also that uh, this Metro customer website is not the transactional one. So there is no e-commerce part on that. So it's uh, to find out what to personalize and what other journey is uh, a bit difficult because it's not just about selling. It's about uh, more softer goals like registering, understanding some content, visiting some content, and uh, going on a specific journey, which is not sell. So this is also important to, to have in mind. Hmm. Thank you. One more question. We still have some time, so, so we can take in a few more questions. Um, how did you align strategy to Metro's KPIs? Yeah, we were uh, working uh, closely with the business representatives of Metro. So, so we have been asking for KPIs, and we, were, we are trying all the time to understand in what what is the business of Metro Cash and Carry and how they are doing the business so then we can find together the right KPIs and the right goals which are on the site. Heavily they are uh, reflected by the UX design and how the site is designed because it's designed to, etch, to, to fulfill some goals and really to go uh, to, to lead the customers to achieve those goals. So uh, it's the, I would say the complexity of the design process, starting with UX, and, and talking all the time with the clients about the measurable results at the end. 
Great. Thank you. There's one more here. Are there a lot of differences in organizations' maturity between the countries, or how do you help less mature ones to bridge the gap to higher maturity? Yeah, there are, uh, the maturity is different in the countries. Some countries are really on the basic, and some countries are re really mature. Uh, we are helping more uh, countries which are less mature, so it's about really helping them to understand the small steps in the beginning that they can apply. So I would say that the less mature countries are uh, in a need of more help from the headquarters than the more mature countries which can do that by their own. So uh, there, there is no methodology behind it, it's just that support is designed to a different level of maturity and we know uh, how to help them uh, if they are more mature or less mature. Hmm. Something, one more around uh, e-commerce and goals and values. So here it comes. Without e-commerce as part of the platform, how did you create goals? What kind of goals? And how did you measure? Mm -hmm. For example, goals are number of registered customers. Goals might be uh, percentage of visits to uh, promotions sections or consumption of uh, the promotions, uh, engagement with some content parts, so how many people are visiting the product sections. These are all goals. Uh, some of them are not that close to the business, but they are all signals uh, for Metro Cash and Carry that customers are willing to buy. So. It's a different scale of goals. Some of them are really close to uh, to direct sale, like uh, becoming a customer, registering for the card, which is enabler to, to purchase in Metro. It's a directly business goal, because if you have the card, then you can buy. But visiting, for example, the product sections uh, might be a signal for us that some products are important and we can promote them somewhere else. So it's about understanding really what what signals, even on the non-transactional sites, are uh, saying to us that the customer is willing to purchase. Interesting. And we are measuring it. Um, we are measuring it, or as uh, conversions, or amount of visits on the on the sites, or engagement with means, which means uh, how long they were on the site, how many, uh, how frequently they are going there, or uh, yeah, things like that. Based on a value that you added to a, um, a goal, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. Um, looking at one entity out of the 25, how much time did it take to develop the marketing strategy? Well, we are not developing the marketing strategies. They have it. We are just asking for that because they know what they want to do. Mm. Uh, we are just helping them to apply it on a platform uh, and in, in the new design. So we are not developing it with the countries. They have it ready and we are just helping them to apply it. Okay, then maybe the question was more about uh, to implement, implementing it. Yeah, so uh, in practice, it's a two days workshop when we uh, need to understand what the country uh, is doing, how the business is running, what are the personas and what they do. And at the end, we are helping them to design the journeys or to uh, to design the content on the journeys and uh, to help them with the personalization of, of the important parts of the journey. So uh, sometimes push promotions, sometimes push uh, the content which is important for the uh, customer groups. And it's really helping them to design what they should focus on. Okay, one last question here, Michal. And I think it's a good one, actually, to, to end with. <laughs> How can we contact you? Yeah, basically, uh, the contact is on the introductory slide uh, on this presentation, or uh, we have the website, actum.cz, uh, where we have all contacts, or uh, my email is michael.popular at actum.cz. So, so we are open to discuss with anyone uh, who has the site core, and we can help, really, uh, to leverage that. Thank you very much, Michal, and, and also to Marina. And thank you, everybody, for attending this webinar. Again, it will be live on sitecoursamoschool.com within the next 24 hours. And then there's only left to say and wish you all a very pleasant day. 
and uh, good luck in, in your future digital projects. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye bye.